Okay. Now, you had an opportunity to do some really fun things in the past week. Yes. We're excited to bring everyone some fun summer stories. So we're looking for some summer fun now on the water, mm -hmm. and we found the perfect thing. What'd you do? How about a Cross Sound Ferry Lighthouse Cruise? Oh, my God. That sounds awesome. You could enjoy beautiful sights and see nine lighthouses just in one trip. Hmm. We're off on the classic lighthouse cruise, departing from the ferry docks in New London Harbor. Good afternoon. Welcome aboard SeaJet, one of Cross Sound Ferry's fast, safe, and comfortable catamaran vessels. Our narrator is local maritime historian Steve Purdy. The lighthouses are going away because of the automation of all of this and improved, you know, uh, electronic navigation. So what they become now is, um, you know, kind of historic artifacts. A lot of them are still operating. All the ones we see are still active lighthouses, but they've been automated. Been automated. Even on this foggy day, the sights as we head toward Orient Point on Long Island are breathtaking from the roof of this ship. Nine lighthouses. That seems like an extraordinary amount of light houses in a small area. Yes, yeah, because of the complexity of the navigational situation in, in this, uh, really in New England in general. This is one of the greatest sailing cruising areas in the country because of that, but it also means there are a lot of hazards. There are a lot of islands to go around. There are reefs and shoals, shallow spots, and the tidal currents run really strong. The first lighthouse we see is New London Harbor Light. Just now off to our starboard bow is New London Harbor Light. This was the first lighthouse built on Long Island Sound. And was the U.S. Lighthouse Society has a passport program, and that draws folks from all over the country looking to get more stamps in their passports for each lighthouse they see. Lisa Laurent is on board from Louisiana, excited to get nine lighthouse stamps on this one cruise. So this is what we're doing. It's a blast. So since you've seen so many, um, this is our special Connecticut tour. What do you think of this? It's great. I mean, we've, we've seen so much coming here, and uh, this is our first boat. We were just so excited to get here. Yeah. <laughs> and even on a foggy day, it's still nice. It's great. Yeah, it's a, it's, it's a different charm to it. You know, it's like spooky. <laughs> You know, and you wonder how, you know, how people got around back in the day, right? As a Connecticut resident, you probably already know what this river heading out to Long Island Sound is called. But Mr. Purdy makes sure you learn that in New England, we revolutionaries say Thames, not Thames. This river has provided important harbors since the mid-17th century and has been known by many names. It was finally officially named the Thames, not the Thames, when New London was, put, was named New London in 1658. Now we approach the Ledge Lighthouse that's believed to be haunted. Local legend says it's inhabited by a ghost named Ernie. The story goes that back in the 1920s or 30s, the keeper learned that his wife had run off with the skipper of the Block Island Ferry. Supposedly, he jumped or fell to his death from the lighthouse roof. Several TV shows have come to look for paranormal activity here, but nothing's been confirmed. It's still fun to feel the goosebumps in the fog today. But don't worry, Captain Bill Fritz has been working these ships since he graduated high school, so you're safe with him. Right now we're doing 31 knots, we're with the tide. So we're really moving along, which is great, so we can see a lot of lighthouses in a short time. And it's a very comfortable ride. We have a ride control system, and it's very smooth. You're not going to get seasick on here. Inside the boat, you can relax in an air-conditioned cabin and enjoy refreshments from the snack bar. While you take in the beauty of the water and the sights, you can also learn some interesting American history. Like the Plum Island Lighthouse is also known as Plum Gut Light. The historic granite lighthouse from 1869 was decommissioned in 1978, and there's now an automated light instead. But boy, did we get the land for cheap. Originally, our government got a good deal in 1826 when the entire Plum Island was purchased from Richard Jerome for $90 for the purpose of building a lighthouse. The tour is two hours long, and you can choose from two itineraries. One headed to Long Island, the other toward Rhode Island, where you'll even get a glimpse of Taylor Swift's house in Watch Hill and a look at the beautiful Watch Hill Lighthouse. Between both tours, you can see a dozen lighthouses, each with a story that illuminates our New England history. You'll also see sites like Fort Griswold, Fort Trumbull, and Electric Boat. Pam and Paulette concur. The Lighthouse Cruise is a great outing for any age. A good thing to put on people's lips. Oh, yeah, definitely. A good thing for kids, too. Yeah. We have, all have grandchildren, and when they come to visit in the summer, this is something they could do. Mm -hmm. It does look nice to take your uh, children or your family out for reservations on the Cross Sound Ferries Lighthouse Cruises. Just go to lighthouse.cruises.com. 
You can book the tickets right there online. Absolutely. What a great